everybody, it's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of the new season. I'm guessing this is the new season of Love After Lockup. I'm so damn confused because all week or all whenever, we TV had us thinking that we were going to be on the new season. Yet on the preview guide, it still says season two, episode 24. So I guess we on, what is this, 2.3, 3.2, season two and a half. We just gonna say we on season 2.3 of Love After Lockup. This is season two, episode 24, Inmate or Soulmate. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Stop playing. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down, and then hit that notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all look, listen, I know I'm a day late and a dollar short with this review, but let me tell you, yesterday, I don't wanna do nothing. And guess what I did? Nothing. I lived my best life with my husband and my son. We ate a bunch of junk and we just chilled out and I didn't want to do a damn thing. It's hard work doing these reviews, doing YouTube videos, period. It's a lot of hard work. So y'all, I did not want to do anything. I just wanted to lounge around the house on Saturday and not do a damn thing. So you did not get any videos yesterday. I apologize, but just know Auntie loves you and I was thinking about you and I actually did miss doing this video. So, um... Please forgive me, but y'all are my ride or die, so y'all still gonna watch the video. Another thing, wanna let you guys know, I am modeling a shirt by a new upcoming designer. Her name is, I believe it's pronounced Briante Craig. I could be saying it wrong, boo-boo. If auntie is saying your name wrong, let me know, okay? I apologize. But she is the owner of Andrea's Clothing. This is her shirt that I am modeling positive vibes. I like it, y'all. It's 100% cotton. Now, just to let y'all know, I am 5'4 and a half, 188 pounds. I have an extra large shirt on. I still got plenty of room. If it's cute, it's cute for a little whoop de whoop you know what I'm saying? You want to dress it up, dress it down or whatever. Pink is my favorite color, so of course I had to rock my pink. But Andrea's clothing, I'm going to leave her link down in my description box below. Y'all probably going to see me in this shirt in my next couple of videos. Just because, you know what I'm saying? Young, black, she trying to get out there. She trying to do it, trying to make this money. She trying to get her bag. So auntie going to help you get your bag, boo-boo. Go on and get your bag. Get your life, girl. She's a cute little girl, too. Y'all go to her website. Like I said, I'm going to leave it down in the description box below. Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review. I'm ready to give it to you, so let's get right on up into it. Y'all, so first up, we have Vincent and Amber. Vincent is 30. He has been talking with Amber. She's 34. She's locked up for drug trafficking, y'all. Now, right off the rip, Vincent gives me real... Clint-ish vibes. Clint and God, as she remember from the last season or whatever, he gives me real Clint vibes. And the reason why I say Clint vibes is because, you know, he's a mama's boy. He lives with his mom. He says that he can't specify what it is that he does for a living, but he does say that it's, what did he say it was, girl? Specialist work. He all outside in the park doing this whole crazy-ass, hardcore, parkour ass workout jumping over cars, lifting up park benches, working out and all of that. Y'all, I think he's an assassin. I think the fool kill people for a living. I don't know. Please don't come kill me, Mr. Gangster, sir. I'm just going off of what it look like. Because he was doing push-ups, like throwing himself and clap, clap. He was doing all this kind of crazy prison workout in the park. He's a killer. I think he's an assassin for a living. He's been talking with Amber for the last 22 months. Now, he said that <laughs> how he met Amber, he wrote to, like, you know, the prison inmate, pimp pal things, whatever, right? He wrote to 10 different women, but Amber was the one that answered back with the most positive feedback. So that's how he chose who his princess was going to be or whatever, right? So like I said, he in the park doing this hardcore parkour workout or whatever. Amber calls him and tells him that she finna get ready to get out in two days. So he's excited. He's super excited. He can't wait to get home and tell his mama, y'all. Now, just based off of first physical appearances, him and Amber don't seem to have not a damn thing in common. That's just me. Now, another thing that he does say that they have not met in person. They've only talked on the phone and they've written letters back and forth to each other. Never met each other in person. So, like I said, if you're just going based off of looks, their chemistry don't look like it would match or whatever, right? 
that's just my opinion. So he goes over to his mama's house. He's telling mama that, you know, she's gonna get ready to get out of prison. I think she's getting, like I said, she's gonna get out in two days or whatever, right? So mama really not feeling Amber. You know what I'm saying? Mama kind of like, okay, now who is she? Who her mama and them? Where'd she get locked up? Who is this girl, baby? Who is she? So he tells her, you know, I love her. You know, it's funny that you ask about her mama, whatever, because uh, her mama got locked up too. Matter of fact, her and her mama locked up together. They got locked up together and they caught the same charge. Drug trafficking, methamphetamine. Mama like, oh, hell no. I don't like this chick, I don't know this chick, but I don't, I don't, I don't even like, I don't, no, no, man, no, man. So he tells mama that he's gonna get ready to fly, fly down to Atlanta because he's gonna pick her up from prison. Now mama asks, where she gonna stay when she get out of prison, baby? I know she not paroled here. Y'all, y'all, y'all. So when she gets out of prison, she's gonna stay with her prison wife named Puppy. Her and Poppy are prison wives. They've been prison wives for 22 however many months that she was locked up. So when she gets out of prison, she's gonna stay in Atlanta with her prison wife and her prison wife's mama. Y'all, so he hops on the plane, gets down there to Atlanta. He's in a rental car. He's on his way to go pick up his girl or whatever, right? He is in the car giddy like a freaking teenage 13 year old boy that just seen his first titty y'all it was real it was it was just ew it was turning me off i'm like why is he so goofy and giddy and all that but you know he in love he finna go pick up his girl from prison or whatever right so he get there eight o'clock in the morning it's about 10 something she finally get out the bus and shows up or whatever right they see each other they embrace and like I said, the chemistry wasn't really there y'all the hug that they gave each other wasn't it was just like, oh, hey, I missed you. Oh, my God. All right, y'all, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Now, she tells him that it's going to be awkward when she first gets out of prison, that they're going to have to learn each other. Even though they've been communicating for 22 months, they still need to get to learn each other and know each other outside of the prison walls. Because let's just keep it real. I'm just finna keep it real. Listen here, Vincent. I'm finna tell you what she don't want to tell you. She been with a taco for the last 22 months. She ain't ready to get with no hot dog. It's gonna be hard for her to switch that up on her buffet plate like that. She been with Puppy for the last 22 months, getting it in with Puppy. And now all of a sudden, she's out. She gotta be your girl. I don't know if it's enough room on her buffet plate for the hot dog too, cause she didn't have a taco the whole time. I'm just saying, I could be wrong. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? She says that her whole life she's been a hustler, a preteen and all of that. From then, she's been a hustler. She ain't afraid to be with Vincent, but she does know, I need to get to know this dude. I don't know nothing about him. I'm gonna have to see where this goes. Hopefully, she does not take advantage of him because again, she was saying that she's a hustler. If she gotta rob Peter to pay Paul, that's what she gonna do. But I'm hoping that if things don't work out to where she is actually in love with him, that she ends up letting this fool go. Because like I said, just off the rip, that chemistry does not seem like it's there. It does not seem like they're going to be together. I ain't wishing nothing bad against nobody. But I'm just saying, you can tell when some shit ain't going to work. And y'all shit ain't going to work. I'm just saying. Moving on from them. Next up, y'all, we have 30-year-old Cheryl. She's been dating 31-year-old um, Josh. He's a bank robber. Now, off the rip, okay, y'all, off the rip, Cheryl gives me Caitlyn vibes. Caitlyn, as y'all remember from last season, I think she was with Matt. She was the one when he got fresh out of prison. Y'all remember she pulled over on the side of the road and they was goosing right there in the field on the side of the road. You know what I'm saying? And they were standing over there at the house with his mama. That chick with Lorette. Yeah, that chick or whatever, right? That's what she reminds me of. This girl says she is obsessed with serial killers. She ended up meeting Josh because she had to do a report on serial killers in school. She ended up searching find an inmate, findakiller.com or whatever, ran across his profile and 
instantly fell in love with him. Now, over the course of her, she's been talking with him, I think for the past year, she has sent this man over $30,000 in a year. A whole damn salary. She says she's even had to take up second jobs before, cleaning people's houses, just to make sure she sends Josh his share. His share? What? Cheryl has three kids. She has a 12-year-old, a 7-year-old, and a 3-year-old. Her sister is a correction. I have the hiccups, y'all. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Really? I get the hiccups right now that I'm recording the video. Ain't this about a... Hose off. Kayla has a 12-year-old, a 7-year-old, and a 3-year-old or whatever, right? She is anxious for Josh to get out and be the stepdaddy to her kids. Her sister's a correctional officer. Her sister ain't feeling not a damn thing about Josh. She ain't with the shits. She like, look here, I see every day how these inmates use their families. They use the women 24-7 and get what the hell it is that they want. What make you think homeboy finna be any different? She like, look here. I'm taking care of him. When he gets out, he gonna take care of me. It is what it is. We in love with each other. Y'all, she dumb. I'm sorry. I don't mean to say that, but she dumb. Just saying. Y'all, so later on, she's having a birthday party for her son or whatever, right? And let me tell y'all, <laughs> I thought it was funny as hell. She had a homeboy come over dressed up like a clown or whatever, right? Because, you know, he's a clown for the kid's birthday party. So they interviewing him or whatever, asking him, like, what do you think about, um, I'm going to call this bitch Caitlin. What do y'all think about Cheryl dating Josh? And the dude is like, you know what I'm saying? He's a bank robber and he's a failed bank robber. So obviously, obviously we see, you know, choices aren't that bright. And I thought that was real messed up. Like, you know how messed up it gotta be for a nigga in a clown suit to tell you that you ain't bright? She's telling her parents that Josh is getting ready to get out of prison. Her daddy ain't with the shits at all. Her daddy like, look here, I'm gonna treat him like what he is, a damn thief. If he gonna pull out a, a, a gun and use it and try to steal some money from somebody, what make you think he ain't finna do it again? Daddy like, nah, I ain't with the shits. I ain't walking you down the aisle. I don't want nothing to do with this nigga. The hell with him. She was like, well, he's getting ready to get out in a few days. I'm finna drive down to Colorado because I can pick him up from prison. Daddy like, what you finna do with these kids? I know you ain't finna leave these damn kids here. Well, I mean, I was hoping I could, you know, I don't, like, maybe leave them here. I'm not finna be doing this shit with you with these Negroes in and out of the doggone prison and you loving serial killers and all of that. We're not finna do that. I'm not finna do that. I was with daddy on that. You don't even know this dude, okay? He out here robbing banks. And like your homeboy in the clown suit said, he a failed bank robber at that. So obviously, the man's choices aren't that bright. <laughs> As fucked up when he said that that was so messed up. But y'all, daddy let her know, I ain't walking you down the aisle. You be with this fool all you want to. But uh, just don't think I'm going to be there to support it. I'm right there with you, Dad. Y'all, next up, we have 47-year-old Angela. She has been talking to 34-year-old Tony. He's locked up for possession of firearm. Now, I like Angela. I like her a lot. I like her, and I like her homegirl. Now, Angela says that she met Tony um, on a pen pal way. It's like findanmate.com. Like, basically, like all of them Find, findaprisoner.com. You know what I'm saying? That's how they end up meeting. They've been talking for a while. She said three months into them talking that he said, you know, he's going to marry her. He wants to marry her. She supports him financially and emotionally. Um, you know, he says he's a cougar hunter. He's into older women. She says she likes the younger men. So that's how they end up hitting it out from there. Now, her homegirl Brenda come over to the house. I like her homegirl Brenda. Her homegirl Brenda was hilarious as hell. Brenda came over with a pack of cores ready to get lit. Now, Angela's telling Brenda that he's getting ready to get out of prison, that he's um he has to be at a halfway house by 7 o'clock. So when she gets when he gets out of prison, they don't have a lot of time to hang out or whatever, right? She wants to go get something to eat, you know, and you know, go back to the house or whatever and chill. And, you know, until he got to be dropped off at the halfway house or whatever, right? Her homegirl, Brenda, like, bitch, I already know it's finna go down. Y'all finna try to get it in and all that. Now, her and Brenda, baby, Brenda and Angela gave me straight up Patty and Selma vibes. Marge and sister. Baby, they look like they, on a good Saturday, get them an 18-pack of cores. 
a carton of Marlboro Red shorts. They finna sit at the house, watch CMT, a marathon of Reba, some Garth Brooks. Baby, they finna live their best chain smoking ass lights. <laughs> I love Brenda. They had that smoker's lather. <laughs> It was the bomb. I loved him. But Brenda letting her know, look here. I used to be out here fucking on a scamming ass, rich ass nigga too when I was locked up in prison. So you need to be careful. Make sure he ain't trying to use you for your money and nothing of that. Angela says that, you know, she knows that he loves her. She loves him. So hopefully their relationship work out. I'm anxious to see when he get out where this thing go because i don't know what it is about angela y'all i like angela i like her home girl too hopefully when this dude get out he don't take advantage of her because baby she gonna smoke all the cigarettes up in walgreens if that nigga do her wrong hopefully he don't though y'all but moving on y'all next up we have 37 year old andrea and 33 year old lamandre y'all now andrea is a boss she has her own company e-class sunwear line where she sh um sells these lit flossy ass eyeglasses and all that girl if you watching this go send me some of your eyeglasses girl so i can go on and model them on my channel you know what i'm saying i look good at some of them sunglasses but she been talking to lamandre y'all lamandre is a hot boy from florida baby when they put the camera on him i seen the grill before i seen the rest of him we ain't even call him lamandre this nigga name is goldie okay Goldie. They met because she said they met through her cousin. Somehow or another, her cousin gave Lamandre a Goldie her address. He wrote her from then she started visiting him and they've been together ever since. He told her, look, you gonna marry me. Ain't no will you. Nigga, you gonna marry me. So she was like, uh -huh, okay. So the whole time that he been locked up, he been supporting her. He sent her over $18,000 in the course of him being locked up. Oh, so he's still a hot boy. He a hot boy behind prison walls. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even mad at you, girl. Because the little bird in me was like, Ew, you doing it like that, Goldie? Okay. Y'all, so she has kid, three kids herself or whatever, right? Her mama is coming over to the house because her mama's finna babysit her kids while she goes and has drinks with her sister. She's one of six girls. She's finna go be with her sister so she can let her sister know that um, all of her sisters know that she is dealing with Goldie. Goldie must be some known dude out there in Florida because she's nervous about telling them. I think she said for the last two years, they've been together. She ain't said nothing to nobody about it. So like I said, mama on her way over to the house so she can go out she can have drinks with her sisters or whatever right now when she say go out to have drinks i think she had on her little sequence onesie and all of that it was cute now i will give andrea this she was cute mama had it going on she had her hair her makeup her clothes and all of that she was looking cute or whatever but baby when she went outside and when she got to wherever she was at it was a rooftop party during the daytime now We've got places like here, like that down here in Austin where, matter of fact, in the domain in Austin, you can go there. There's rooftop parties going on right now, Sunday fun day, during the daytime. That's what we do. But in my mind, when she said go out, I thought she meant out, out. But you know what I'm saying? We got rooftop day parties here in Austin too, happen all the time. I ain't even mad at you. Hey. So she over there at the, you know, thing or whatever, right? Mean with her sisters. So she's telling her sisters, look, you know, I've been wanting to tell y'all that I've been dating this guy. As a matter of fact, I'm engaged to this guy. Y'all probably know who he is. His name is Lamandre. All the sisters are like, what? Lamandre? What? Why are you talking to him? Now, I'm guessing, like I said, he must be a known dude back over there in Daytona, wherever they from. You know what they remind me of? Now, y'all know in the hood or whatever growing up, it's certain families you hear the last name, you like, what? Oh, hell no. Either them niggas crazy, you don't mess with them niggas, or, or something like that. Hence, my last name ain't Brown, but my family are the Browns. So when you hear about the Browns and Austin, everybody like, who? Larry Brown? I know that nigga there. <laughs> Shout out to my brother. He cut hair in Austin, Texas. You know what I'm saying? But... It's just certain last names, households that you like, okay, them niggas is crazy. I ain't said nothing against nobody. I'm in Austin. I already know. It's plenty of last names down here. Y'all just don't fuck with. Cause they crazy. Um, they deranged. Um, they will kill you and your whole family. Or um, they just some players or whatever. But hey, I don't want, I don't want no no spiveys after me. I don't need no Johnsons, no Satterwhites. 
No none of that. No Harris's, none of that. I loves everybody. I don't need no Henry's after me or nothing. Shout out to all my people. I'm giving all of y'all a shout out. Yuck. All of y'all. Sisters wasn't feeling it. One sister done got so pissed off, she got up and walked away, walked out. Another sister done went and called mama. It started raining, y'all. They have to go bring the party on the inside. They all coming inside and shit. Soon as they walk downstairs, her mom is there. Ain't she supposed to be at the house watching the babies? What is you doing up here? Is they in the car? What the hell is going on? Mama like, no. I heard about this little convict that you out here trying to date or whatever, and I ain't with it. I ain't with the shits. Let you know you need to go ahead and cut that off, whatever it is that y'all doing. I was really thinking, like, Mama, ain't she supposed to be at the house with the babies? What is you doing here? Y'all, she get mad. She hop in her car, and she leave. The whole thing was kind of weird. Like, But like I say, it's just certain households. They crazy. They crazy. You can't mess with them. So hopefully, you know what I'm saying, the family or the sisters come around because she got to set up in her mind. Her and Goldie going to be together. And that's just what it is. Y'all, last couple we got is uh, Lacey. She's a 29-year-old Instagram model. She has been dating 33-year-old John. Possession of firearms or whatever, right? Now, Lacey is... Lacey's very plastic, okay? She's got the lip fillers. She's got the nose. Fake tether ball tits, fix the flat in the butt, all of that. She's she's just bless her heart, bless her heart. She's been talking with um, what's his full name, John or whatever, right? They've been talking for a few months. Now she has a history. She says she only dates convicts or whatever, right? Her last couple of re relationships were convicts. Her ex husband, father of her kids, is currently locked up right now. Her and John were actually dating in high school. They broke up. Later on, got back together. A few weeks of uh, them being together, he ended up getting locked up again. He locked up now, whatever, right? So her dad is on the way over to the house once again to babysit her kid. Everybody got their mom and daddy coming over to babysit their kids so they can go visit the convicts. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want to judge though. Live your best life. I ain't mad at you. Hey. Daddy come over to the house to babysit the kids, whatever. She tells daddy that John is getting ready to get out of prison and that, you know, she's going to go down there and she's going to pick him up when he gets out of prison, whatever. She lets daddy know that he is paroled here to the house. So regardless of how you feel about him, he going to be here. Daddy ain't with the... We got some smart parents in this season of Love After Lockup. Let me tell you, because daddy, these daddies especially, they ain't with the shits. Daddy's like, look here. What you think? Um... I'm finna be in handcuffs with you. We all finna be in handcuffs walking down the aisle. We gonna all be in handcuffs, checking in a parole every week. No, I'm not with that. He tells her, you need to grow up and you need to think about your kids. Because, and he must say that because he must know something that we all don't know. Obviously, if this is your trend, you like these men that's locked up in, in the prison. And, and, and you out here, you know, you got kids, girl. Think about your damn kids. Daddy's like, look here. I ain't with the shits. Yeah, I babysit your kids, whatever, but uh, you gonna have to do something about you loving these old jailbird ass niggas because I ain't with it. Y'all, so she's in the car on her way to go get a spray tan or whatever, right? So she's on the phone with John telling him how she's finna get a spray tan so she be ready when he come home and all of that or whatever, right? Y'all, she gets off the phone with him, whoop de whoop go in there and finna get a spray tan. She get a phone call from another dude. His name is Shane. He locked up too. She like, hi, baby, I missed you. Oh, my God. I'm going to get a spray tan so I look so good for you when you get out. Y'all, she say her and John got into an argument. Just to be petty, she went on a findaninmate.com website, came across Shane's profile, instantly fell in love with him. They've been talking ever since. He gets out of jail tomorrow, so she finna get a spray tan so she can go pick up Shane from prison. She done lied to her daddy, telling her daddy that she got a modeling shoot that she finna go to, but really she finna go pick up a whole nother nigga that's in prison that her daddy don't know nothing about. Then she gonna say she only got a few weeks to figure out how she feels about Shane until John comes home. Y'all, the episode ended from there. I'm like, what? No, now what? What the hell just happened? That happened so damn fast, y'all. I'm looking forward to the next season. I'm looking for, I mean, the next episode. I'm looking forward to the rest of this season because it seems like it's going to be good as hell, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this review. Again, Auntie apologizes for being late. But hey, it was Saturday. 
and I ain't want to do shit. <laughs> Once again, let me remind y'all about Andrea's clothing for this cute shirt, Positive Vibes. Please let me know what y'all think about this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.